The views and opinions expressed within the video content found on the Indie Comics Network are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views or positions of the Indie Comics Network or its sponsors. Hey everyone, it's me, Allison McClone, the Alley Cat, and I'm here to do some drawing. I'm working on a, a digital project that I'm going to be trying to make as a print and see what I can come up with for it um, if I start doing cons again. Right now, I'm leaning against doing a lot of cons in the future because of my health. Um, and... I really can't lug things around. This multiple sclerosis makes it hard. But anyway, I'll show you what I'm up to. It is a Wolverine and X-23 piece that I'm doing in a bit more of a stylized style. Um, so it'll be a bit more cartoonish in some ways. Um, I've exaggerated the hand sizes and things uh, with it. And this is the line Ruffy. So I generally start with silhouettes, and then I kind of start to build off of those. <clears throat> and that's how I get to this phase. I have the silhouette Ruffy, and then I have the line Ruffy. Now I'm working on the line Ruffy where I start to make sense of the silhouettes. And basically, I get some baselines down. Um, the concept behind this is it is a kind of a mashup of The Last of Us, but with X-Men. So The Last of X. So I figured if two people were going to survive the post-apocalyptic world of The Last of Us, Wolverine and X-23 seem to fit. So that is my idea. That being said, and let's get to work on it. Let's see what we come up with. I said this is the line roughy. So I will be going through and doing much more detailed lines once I kind of get a good feel for everything. This project will probably take a few weeks to do, which I think would be kind of cool to work on a project for a few weeks. A bit easier when doing things digitally. also be getting a color roughy at some point to kind of get the full kind of uh, feel to this as well. One of my cats has made a little trilling sound. I don't know if you could hear that, but hey. Okay, I get a little bit of reference material for X-23. Not really sure how her hair is off the top of my head. I know I have some art of her someplace that I can refer to. If not, I'll pull up um, Daphne, what's her name, who played her in Logan. And I'll use that as a bit of reference. I got a ton of Wolverine stuff.
hell I have Mr. Sinister. Where? Gambit and Rogue. More Wolverine. Our hair goes. I guess it works. All right. those out for now so I don't get bothered by them.
Okay, so I basically have Logan in the in the Joel kind of persona, so that'll work. He kind of has that style of dress sometimes, so Check his cuffs later just to kind of get that going, but... Okay, start getting some real lines in. They found me. Thank you. 
anyone just joining us, we are working on a Wolverine X-23 piece. Oh, hmm. uh, thanks, Marv. Hope you have a great weekend. Hey, friend. How's it going? It's good seeing you. Uh, we're working on a Wolverine X-23 piece. Um, trying some... a mashup, as it were, where I took the idea of The Last of Us, and I called it The Last of X. This will probably be a multi-week process video. I have kind of a goal in mind with the level of detail and grit I want on this, so it's going to take a while to get it. I'm actually using a pretty pencil that has a certain level of grit to it. I can lose right now. Go back and do those. This piece will also be more stylized than my usual art. I should say, my more usual stuff that I do on the stream. I'll still have my manga look to it, as well as my other key things, but it will have some slightly more cartoon aspects to it. So,
part about doing digital work. I can move things. get back to that later. Let's see. Hmm. Um, I have not watched the new um, Junji anime yet. Sorry, I just saw that. For some reason, StreamYard does not like to refresh on me all the time. For chat comments. What do I have going on? I am working on a Wolverine X-23 piece. Hmm. And I am loosely calling it... The Last of X. I had this idea earlier this week of a mashup of The Last of Us with uh, X-Men characters, and I was thinking that Wolverine and X-23 would work well as Joel and Ellie, so that's basically the feel I'm trying to get with them. I've been, like, obsessing on that show. It got me to play the video game again. I thought I would never play that again. It was like all the feels. I still haven't played the sequel. Fighting clickers are, yeah, no, that was my thought. I was also thinking that their healing factors would basically make them immune to the disease.
and that adamantium claws would probably go right through the bloaters. Might be kind of cool to do one like as infected and um, then have the healing factor kind of come through and save them as it were, but you know, it gets through to them first before the healing factor has a chance to kick in. Oh, Sam Keith is amazing. Um, his run on the max, his um, creator own book, was incredible. Um, up to a point. Um, basically, the the MTV series they ended up doing of it. I usually recommend watch that because you get the whole thing. But um, but yeah, his stuff is really good. Um, Sam Keith, um, he takes some pretty solid influence from Frazetta and a few others. But yeah, no, Ari agrees with me that they would definitely survive. Yeah, it was kind of my thought that they would. But it might be kind of fun, like I said, that to get overwhelmed, that briefly become, like, infected before they're able to kick in and get out of it. How many would they kill in the process? Might be fun to draw. I don't think I'll draw Marvel characters as a book-related thing unless I'm getting paid. So. Doing some fan art's one thing. Could be interesting. Uh, Wolverine could get infected, but X23 couldn't. Definitely kind of change up things a little bit. Actually, um, put the eyebrows there. Wolverine's kind of bushy. What I'm going to do is going to put the top of the eyebrows there. I'm actually going to put them right at the damn it, top of his eyes. Probably gonna tweak these a half a dozen times, so Yeah, that's what I was thinking, the um, the old man Logan stuff. Uh, that could be kind of interesting. Maybe I should draw him as Hugh Jackman. Uh, it's kind of going for a bit more of a comic Wolverine.
Oh dear. Yeah. I don't think it's clearly distinguishable who it is, so... Yep, uh, scowling. Are you going to color this black and white? This will be in color. That's why I said this is probably going to take me multiple weeks to do because I, I'm going to be a bit more of a perfectionist with it. Uh, as I said, this is my, this is me just trying to find my uh, base lines before I really start to go crazy with the detail. I might have to do some off stream stuff with it too. I'll also most likely tone it as I um, as I color it too. Art. Yep. That was good. That was in uh, the second one, I think. Which was my favorite of the X-Men movies was X2. Um, I thought Logan was probably the best solo movie of the X characters. Um, but I felt the movies, unfortunately, were more of the Wolverine show. Especially the third one. I really didn't like that one.
But I will say that Hugh Jackman had some really good screen presence, and I did like um, the connection with Anna Paquin's character, of her version of Rogue. I feel like they should have done Jubilee or Shadowcat, but, you know, just my opinion. At least they did get um, a really good X-23 in Logan. Really wish she got a movie. Here. Which character is better, Anishi or Shishio? Um, it's kind of a tough call. Anishi was, you know, the final villain, but in some ways I think Kenshin wasn't really prepared to deal with him in the same way. Um, I kind of think that Shishio is probably the more dangerous villain overall. Um, but I mean, the revenge arc was amazing, so... You might actually get a proper revenge arc, too. All done as an anime, anyway. I mean, the proper version of it, I guess, would be the manga. But... I found Kenshin through the anime. Oh yeah, I still have to draw Kenshin on stream. I forgot about that. Ghibli is a hard outfit to pull off. I live in a, I live in action yellow trench coat and all. Yeah, yeah, I am. Um, actually, really love the yellow trench coat thing with Ghibli. I think it's great, but I can see where that would be like a color corrector's nightmare in certain ways. Because red certainly can be. <clears throat> the revenge mangas are the best. Yes, the revenge manga was probably the best storyline. And I love, absolutely love, the, the Shishio story arc of the Kyoto arc. Um, but yeah, when I read the revenge arc... I was taken aback. Also, I mean, you got Kenshin's history in it and everything.
Give me one second here. Okay. He did a Frankenstein on Bongo. That's kind of interesting. I did not know that um, Watsuki had did a Frankenstein on me. Or manga. It could be kind of interesting, I think. I'm hesitant to buy anything he does, though. So. Mutton chops for the win. Yes, I agree. One of the best parts of Wolverine is the mutton chops. Yeah, Frankenstein manga would be very cool. I always like the Frankenstein character. Yes, um, Mike Minola did the uh, the Tops comic version of Bram Stoker's Dracula back in the '90s. Actually, have that comic. I love Mignola's art. I didn't really appreciate it back then, but I definitely do now. This type of person here. Not a stipple brush around here. 
but eh, I'll find it eventually. Eh, no big deal. Let's do it. I think that um, Bram Stoker Dracula comic, I believe it had like a glow-in-the-dark cover. Which was one of the big gimmicks of the 90s. It was a Ghost Rider comic that did that too. I think it was like Ghost Rider issue number 15 or something like that. Had the logo with some... Um, it was it might have been the logo and like the fire was glow-in-the-dark around his head. Brilliant, like Mark Texaria cover. This would probably be something that I go back and make a bunch of changes on. <laughs> you want to do this? <laughs> Lori's like, crazy ideas from the 90s? I'm in. It's like, yes. I mean, I will say this. I bought a lot of those stupid things. My mother was like, why do you keep buying these comic books? And I'm like, well, I like the art. She didn't understand. Uh. Spent a lot of money on comic books. Had a book of Edgar Allan Poe. It had stunning drawings. That makes sense. Yeah, I could see Edgar Allan Poe being um, having some cool art for uh, somebody. There's a, a local artist hmm, around here. Um, he's down. He was down the Cape. He passed away a few years ago. Uh, Edward Gorey. If you want to see some interesting, like creepy art that um, Scotty Young took some inspiration from. I highly recommend Edward Gorey. And he did an amazing interpretation of Dracula. For like, it was like for a stage show, but you can get all of his, like, his art he did for it and everything. And for the PBS series Mystery, they actually animated his uh, a bunch of his art for their intro. It was very, very cool. You can actually go to the Gory House and um, and take a tour of it and like see a lot of his stuff. It's like all down in Cape Cod. If you're ever on the Cape, I highly recommend visiting the Gory House. And I guarantee there will be a cat. Ever Gory love cats. There will always be a cat in the gory house. He was a man after my own heart.
All right. Not sure if I like his eyes the way I did them. No, yeah, I'll get back to it later. Hmm. Look for the look for the manga knights of the zodiac. Great plot, just like <clears throat> Dilution. Also, the armor designs are unique. Yes, I've seen Knights of the Zodiac. It is a pretty cool book. I think there's a mo an anime of it too. I believe I've seen that as well. Might be thinking of a different one. Let's see, it's about time for the pull list. I actually got it right next to me for what I'm doing this week. Okay, maybe now I won't hit the eyedropper. I'll probably still find a way to hit. Okay, let's give that a save. And we're going to go to the pull list. Okay. All right. And for the pull list this week, we're going with another Daniel Warren Johnson book, Do a Power Pop. This is the collected edition of his amazing series, Do a Powerbomb. Um, I'm not a wrestling person. Um, like, if I was watching wrestling, it would basically be for... to look at the men. That's basically the reason I would watch wrestling. Um, this comic moved me. It's just amazing. Uh, it's got it's amazing artwork. Hmm. Uh, and a killer story that basically 
takes like some of the craziness of wrestling and like just moves it to like a, like a 10 on the Richter scale type of way of doing things. Hmm. Now, hmm. The book is about a character named Lana Steelrose and she is basically trying to make her way as a pro wrestler. And hmm, they fight some pretty interesting people in a supernatural setting. Um, I don't really want to talk too much about the plot, aside from that it does have supernatural aspects. And it does have... Um, Uh, basically elements that are, you know, impossible and things like that. But it's just a very nicely drawn, heavily detailed book. And it's done for, you know, it's a labor of love. Um, this, um, Daniel is a very big wrestling fan, and his stuff is just incredible. He just has so much energy to his, his battle sequences and stuff, you know, his fight sequences. They're just incredible to look at. And I will say that the ending did move me to tears. So, hmm. Granted, I do cry pretty easy, but the ending was just utterly amazing. <clears throat> so, yeah. So, if you have the opportunity to get this. Um, I have it all as floppies too, but as soon as the trade came out, I had to grab it. Um, so I got do a power bomb. And, uh, here are some pictures of the alternate covers that are in it. But yeah, I yeah I can't praise this book enough. The Daniel Warren Johnson and Mike Spicer killed it. Um, Colors are by Mike Spicer, um, and uh, letters are by Russ Wooten. And that's basically the team. It was done as an image book, and he basically started really watching wrestling again after his daughter was born and wouldn't um, uh, fall asleep. So he'd walk around, you know, hold her, watch wrestling. But yeah. Yeah, so, um, yeah, the preface, the, the book, uh, the little tag to the back is Lana Steel Rose wants to be a pro wrestler, but she's living under the shadow of her mother, the best to ever do it. Everything changes when a wrestling obsessed necromancer asks her to join the grandest pro wrestling tournament of all time, which is also the most dangerous. It's the wrestler meets Dragon Ball Z in a tale where the competitors get more than they ever bargained for. And that, that, basically sums it up. So yes, there, there's a necromancer in it and stuff like that. And it's a very solid book. I highly, highly recommend it. Again, do a powerbomb. Huh. I've messaged on um, Mr. Johnson a couple of times, try to get him on my stream, but he hasn't responded to me. He's probably just too busy. Mm -hmm. Hoping to get Dave back on the stream soon, too, though. Want to do an art stream with Dave. We draw D D characters.
I would have to say that um, D-Dubs is probably my favorite, like, modern artist. I mean, he's been in the business for a while now, but his stuff is just, it just blows me away. He also live streams Friday nights, usually. Um, he basically does a Friday with D-Dubs. Time frame for it is, well, it's on when it's on. Usually it's around 6-ish Eastern time, but it could be, it all depends on like when he frees up to be able to do it. I think drawing Wolverine would be kind of an interesting character to work with. Um, definitely has a very interesting look. I mean, the hair alone is just amazingly fun to draw. years ago when they killed Wolverine. It's like, he'll get better. Death in comics pretty much, um, at least in the mainstream books, pretty much means nothing, so... I mean, I guess Uncle Ben has remained dead, but that's about it. I mean, they brought Bucky back. 
Granted, I like the Winter Soldier, but they brought Bucky back. They brought um, uh, Goblin back. They brought Barry Allen back. I guess he wasn't really dead, but he was pretty much dead. Not walk it off. Yeah, basically. That's exactly what it is. Like, oh, you're dead? Walk it off. Oh, something that I will bring up now. Next week, there will be a guest on. So while I sketch and talk, um, we will be hanging out with my bestie, Laurie Calcaterra. <clears throat> so the two of us together on stream again. Hasn't been for a while, so should be good, though. The two of us will be up to our no good um, uh, typical selves. So I like the way that is. I'll play with that a bit. Hooray! Yes, hooray is right. Lori does the. Well, I actually uh, was one of my books of the week was the first issue of Path of the Pale Rider. Um, highly recommend it. It's a great book. Um, Laurie's getting ready to do the third Kickstarter soon. I believe the the print run for um, for the uh, second issue is about. I think it went out to print. So yeah, yeah, I definitely miss streaming with you too. That's something we should try to do more often. Find a way. Still thinking we should definitely get the voodoo bitches thing going. Absolutely. Now have to pick a day to do that. Um... I have been thinking about trying to do another stream and focus it a lot on my gaming art. I don't think it'd be on the Indie Comics Network, but I would do it on my own my own channel and Twitch channel and everything. Um, I'd have talked to Nita about it being on the Indie Comics Network because it's not really comics related, so I don't really want to flood everything with that. Um, but this is something I was doing and it wouldn't be every week. Uh, but I do a lot of stuff for the games I run and things. So. Uh, we have Voodoo. Who do you do? Yeah, I'm still not liking that. 
and I'm going to mess with that collar later. And I'll figure out what I want to do with the collar later. So, Actually, let's do a little bit of X23. Now, Ellie's got a ponytail. So what I'm thinking I'm going to do is add a ponytail with X23 as well. But she'll have her long hair down, but she'll also have it in a little bit of a ponytail. Debated putting her hair in pigtails, but um, I guess that could be kind of interesting with how dangerous X23 is. So, cute little girl in pigtails, then, then she pops claws and kills you. Not like that. I'll do the ponytail later. Might rough that out on the layer below first a bit more. I mean, as line art goes, this is kind of the start of my line art anyway. It's when I really start to do my 
the kind of lines I want to work with more. Hmm. And, uh, save. Hmm. Downloaded Creep Show comics and printed them. Well, that's always that's always cool. I was a huge fan of um. Well, I am a huge huge fan of EC comics, like Tales from the Crypt and stuff like that. Uh, hmm. 
which is where Creepshow got its idea from. So it's Romero and Stephen King were like, we love these comic books. Let's do a movie. And Joe King was in the first movie, too. Of course, it goes by Joe Hill now. Starting to come together loosely. The favorite chapter is when a wooden Indian is alive and takes revenge. That always works. Let's see. It's actually coming up on 4.30 my time right now. And... I actually have a couple of things I got to do today. So I'm going to be ending the stream in a moment. Uh, I'd like to thank everybody who came by, said hello, talked for a few. Um, and we'll be doing more of The Last of X next week um, on Arting with the Alley Cat. Uh, I'll actually make a thumbnail for it. Or at least I'll have it in the title description. Uh, so, one thing that I'm going to do first is plug my book. Okay, just wanted to show off The Last Sentinel briefly for everybody. And also, as a bit of a preview for something, um, this is a piece I'm actually working on for a game. So, um, give people an idea of something that I do when I do gaming stuff. Um, but yeah. Uh, go back to that. And yep, I'll see you next week, Lori. And you guys all have a great one. I need to do that thing. Hmm. All right. Mm -hmm.